What kind of secret knowledge would a tightrope walker have to have to feel safe walking across the Grand Canyon? Anthony here for D News, and this Sunday on live television, Nick Walenda is going to tightrope walk across the Grand Canyon on a 1,500 foot wire, which is also 1,500 feet above the Colorado River, with no harness, no safety fail safes. This is insane, but for Nick, it is only slightly more insane than a regular day, because Nick is a seventh generation member of the Flying Walendas, which is a family of funambulists. Tightrope walkers, I'm just trying to sound smart. Last year, he pulled a similar stunt across Niagara Falls, and I've always wondered, what keeps these guys balanced? What, what are some of the natural forces they're working against here? So, the trick to walking safely on a tightrope is that you have to keep your center of mass directly over the rope to stay balanced. If you move even a little bit off center, the rope begins to oscillate. It swings back and forth like a pendulum. And obviously, as that happens, your body rocks more, causing more oscillation, and then you're dead at the bottom of a canyon. So how do you keep your center of mass centered? You control inertia and acceleration and friction. When we stand on the ground, our feet are next to each other. We have a lot of lateral balance. It's hard to knock us over from the side. We need that because two thirds of our total body mass is in the top third of our body. We're top heavy. In high wire walking, your feet are directly one in front of the other. So you're weak laterally. That stance plus where our mass is means that someone walking on a tightrope is essentially an inverted pyramid. So you need some side to side balance. That's why tightrope walkers carry long poles. Nix is about 40 feet long. It helps to equalize and distribute that mass laterally. It looks like it's so long that it just starts to bend by nature, but that's actually by design. Keeping the ends of the poles lower makes for a more stable distribution of mass and a lower center of gravity. It increases the walker's moment of inertia, which is basically just a rigid body's resistance to rotation, which means it's gonna take a more powerful external force to knock him off balance. You know, external forces like wind. But the wind is not even a big deal up there on the Grand Canyon because the highest average wind speed in the summertime is about eight miles an hour, which is a light breeze. It would take a 45 mile an hour wind to really push against you, maybe 70 to knock you off your feet. But of course, that's all with solid footing. And that doesn't mean it doesn't make the cable sway slightly. And uh, every step you take does too. You take a step, it sends a vibration down the wire and then back because of tension. The best way for a walker to keep their motion is to just keep moving. Directional inertia is your friend. Objects in motion tend to stay in motion and they want to go in the same direction. The extra mass of the pole helps with that too. It keeps a walker from veering. But staying in motion is rough because a misstep or a slip could mean needing to slow down, reconfigure, get your balance. So high wire walkers minimize that need by wearing very thin leather shoes. They're like slippers. And they have this grippiness like human skin that also allow for a foot's full range of bending motion. Now with all those things in place, you are still walking across a string in the sky. Okay, preparing might put physics a little more on your side, but that doesn't do a single thing for training, sense of balance, or just human imperfection. And if you want to see all this stuff in motion, Nick will be walking across the canyon live this Sunday, June 23rd at 8 p.m. Eastern on the Discovery Channel. Subscribe here for more D News.